Hey, what's up? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video, and this is my second Sketchbox unboxing video. Thanks for joining. So, since we've done this once already, I've learned a little bit about a better way to do it, I suppose. But again, this is not a sponsored video. But if you do like it, um, feel free to use the referral code for Sketchbox, and then you can get a discount on your first box or whatever a discount on purchasing it but then also if I get three of you to sign up I'll get a free box so I'll get to do another one of these for you I have one more already here actually it's somewhere in this room um, but this one is actually the box from June 2019 I've been so busy with life that I haven't actually gotten to opening yet so I'm gonna do that now today with you um, so let's get into it as always on the box itself they have art from somebody that I guess used previous sketch boxes um, you just tag them on Instagram this is Kala Bracket I guess made with our April 2019 premium box so again as well this is the premium box that I ordered I ordered three of them I did another video already as I said but let's get into this since I kind of know what to expect now with what might be inside of it I'll go through it. I'm not going to um, show you examples of the the products um, until later because what I learned from last time doing it, once I actually started making stuff, it uh, changed my perception of what I thought about it. Some packing supplies, packing whatever, to make sure it doesn't move around too much, I guess. I don't know. Sticker. So. They have the June Sketchbox featured artist right here. The featured artist is Gris, oh, Instagram, at gris030.de. So that's Gris. He looks like a painter. Gris paints and draws so he can think. Okay, great. So just put that down there. All right, we're going to go through this box one piece at a time. Four times Windsor Newton can't. Cotman 8 mil little paints or something of that nature. Watercolor. Watercolor. Awesome. All right. This month is all about traditional watercolor. So they gave us four times Windsor Newton Cotman um, watercolors. First, we will include four of our favorite reasonably priced watercolors to give you a wide range of tones. Cotman watercolors stand up to the more expensive brands in terms of quality by replacing the mineral pigments with sophisticated synthetic pigments. We choose a landscape palette for your art this month. Great. All right. Next up is Holben Artist Watercolor. Wani, number two. Retail price $9.65. Oh, these were $4.99 each. The first one was $4.99 each. This extra fine European style transparent watercolor known for its purity, permanence, and brilliance preserves the brush handling qualities inherent in Japanese watercolor techniques. Because it contains oxygenol, animal byproducts, or other dispersing agents, Holbin watercolor moves slowly, allowing for greater color density and brush controls. We picked a fresh color to extend your palette to include portraits and sunsets. Next up, we have Cree Take Zig H2O Brush. Long detailer, retail price $7.50. This water brush is great for its ability to add fine detail to your watercolor paintings. Since it stores water in its long barrel design, you can precisely control the amount of water in the brush. Flow control makes traditionally hard to handle medium medium much easier so you fill it up with water I guess and then you uh, can paint this is your paintbrush your watercolor that's pretty neat we'll see how that plays out do do another Cree take zig hikey food fod f u d e foodie pen I don't know it's probably some word I'm not pronouncing correctly this pen has a hard brush of oh, 275. This brush has a hard brush fine tip that is ideal for outlining. It contains water-based black pigment ink. 
so be sure to use it after laying down your watercolors. If you'd like to darken up your watercolor, the ink will blend out with water to achieve that effect. Cool. And then, last but not least, Aquaboard. Custom ampersand Aquaboard. Three and a half, three by eight and a half. Three inches by eight inches. Retail price, $4. Simply put, we love this watercolor surface. It allows proper time for color mixing before it sets in and becomes permanent. We work with Ampersand to develop this custom size only available in this box. All right, there we go. So now I am going to make something with all this stuff. I think, well, we'll see what I end up making. I don't know. And then I will give my impressions of of what it's like to work with and how I, I managed to work with it. Cool. All right, here we go. I decided to narrate the making process. I'm making a tunnel book. So right now I'm making the pages for the tunnel book with some watercolor paper. I talk about more of that, about that, what kind of paper later. I started to draw Spider-Man. So I'm making a tunnel book featuring the Miles Morales Spider-Man. I started to draw the Spider-Man, but I didn't record most of that process because I was, uh, wasn't sure. I just didn't feel confident mainly around the, I just started drawing. It took me a while. It took me a while to figure out how to draw it right now. I'm just tracing, darkening up what I drew, what I ended up coming up with because I, I'm then going to trace it onto the watercolor paper so I can do the watercoloring part of it. So then it's just a technique, my head sometimes ducks into the picture i need to work on that but that's what's going on here and then i'm just now i'm just like um double checking because sometimes when i trace it's hard to tell if i got all the lines correct i'm just kind of fixing up some of the lines um based on my initial image because i really like the way the the first drawing came out sometimes when you start tracing it doesn't quite hit it as hard like the way I like the initial one so I just try to fix it and then now I'm using the pen that came in the sketch box the one of the pens I forget the name of it talk about that again later in the video when I review each thing I'm not gonna review during this making part so we will talk about that in a minute um, I just now I'm working on the second page or another page of the book um, this one I'm writing out spider-man in this lettering style i do is kind of block letter graffiti somewhat graffiti style um that i do i've i don't know if you're familiar with letters by zim on instagram you've seen me do this before and i've been wanting to do it in a form of a tunnel book for a long time see how i could do the lettering as well as a tunnel book and so this is the first time i've done it with this spider-man tunnel book the spider-man tunnel book I mentioned I think multiple times in this video but I actually had this intention to do in off the first I had this idea of I've been holding on to this idea for a while uh, I wanted to do it with the first sketch box but the first sketch box I got didn't the materials weren't conducive to doing it so I just did my lettering so oh you saw my lettering style in the last sketch box right now I'm just drawing a it's like the headphones because Based on the Miles Morales, um, you know, Spider-Man, he's a younger teenager type and, you know, likes to listen to music and different things, especially inspired by the um, the cartoon Into the Spider-Verse, the movie. So the headphones were part of that. So I wanted to put the headphones in as an element on my tunnel book. And as you notice there, and I do it again here, I when I traced with the light table, I went straight to the pen, which I didn't even realize I did that until watching this back. Normally I do that, I darken it first and then I'll do the trace with a pencil on the light table, like here, like about to do it. I normally would do a pencil, but I went straight to the pen. I didn't even realize I did that. Probably because I figured it was simple enough. I don't even know. I think I just forgot how I did it. So now I'm testing out the watercolors. I decided to 
start with this Spider-Man symbol, the Miles Morales Spider-Man symbol as my first thing, just mainly so I could just test out how the watercolors worked and I could do it practically like while I'm not just an arbitrary test, but I just tested in this format. And as you saw for a moment, as you see on the right of the screen, there's that water pen they, they gave you in the sketch box. This was one of the only two times I used it and I used it the way they use it in the video where they just put water on your image first and then dripped ink there you know, the watercolor ink stuff into it and i didn't really i haven't mastered that technique at all yet so i'm not really trying to do that right now i'm just filling out like my style of doing the graffiti thing as usually i'd kind of do this kind of i've been using this kind of like um liquidy i don't know just kind of as if something was splashed onto the letters in a way or something like some kind of weird you know graffiti looking thing makes it this is where it starts to really get unlegible <laughs> when i do this part um but that's kind of i don't know the history the the tradition of graffiti lettering style isn't really about being legible it's about maybe it's more about just being kind of cool looking you know i don't know I just like it so that's what I did and this is um, I talk more about this um, later in the video but this is where I'm using the uh, single uh, what's it called watercolor that's the was the single one they gave us the more expensive watercolor I'll tell you more about that later now I'm starting in on Miles Morales spider-man um, I kind of drifted off the screen a little bit more than I wish I would have, but I think right now I'm like it's drifting away. Where'd I go? I pull it back eventually. And then I'm just trying to, that, that area around the neck and the, so using black. So Miles Morales' Spider-Man suit's mostly black. So black with shadows is sometimes hard to do. I'm still very much learning how to do it. Like I didn't really go all in on the black all the time with it, but that's kind of what I did there. And this is all just like, you know, I haven't driven, drawn like characters like this for a long time. So this is just all just doing the best I can without, without a lot of practice. I'm adding the spider web kind of effect on his outfit. I did a little test before I did it. Wasn't sure how to do it on his, a lot of the comic book artists will use has a little white for the webbing but i just went with black the webbing um yeah so now i'm done i think i'm pretty much done the uh oh i yeah, still so this is so that was the second time i used that i just dumped water on the page it's i was just this was just an experiment i just wanted to uh make a background image that's like in the very back of the book that yellow and it wasn't really it just was nothing specific just something now i'm cutting out all the stuff for the tunnel book of and that's what you do with tunnel books you cut out stuff i really like the the look of the cut look of things because it just i don't know i just really enjoy it so that's part of why i've been doing tunnel books for so long <clears throat> is uh, i just enjoy the the look of using a knife to create art out of paper, knife and paper cut, paper cut stuff. So I'm leaving like a little white border around everything I'm cutting out, which I think gives it a good cartoony graphic look. It comes out really well as well in the, uh, when I cut, start cutting the actual Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man, you'll see it more, but it looks good. <clears throat> I really like the way, you know, it's like something about cutting out the stuff really gives what you did draw more impact sometimes. Like for me, like just that Spider-Man there by itself, like at first, like side by side, if you look at that Spider-Man versus just the black and white drawing I did earlier, I kind of like the black and white drawing better. But once I cut it out and did this, like that white border around it, it really kind of makes it pop more. I really like the way that ended up looking right now after I cut it out. More cutting. I just um, 
from experiences I've done so many tunnel books, my experience of using about a quarter inch border really kind of works out is pretty much my default border width. So that's basically all I did. I just used my grid cutting mat to measure it um, and just cut out a border. This is a comic book I bought. It's a store of Miles Morales comic book to use for the bindings, um, the accordion bindings you'll see in a second. I'm just cutting out the shapes and you know, I, I've my uh, experience since I've been doing tunnel books for so long. One of the things that I do is uh, just cut out enough paper, whatever my I'm gonna use for my binding, and just fold it in half, and then make the amount of folds I need. I don't like measure accurately to start off with, and then just cut off the excess after I'm done. I just I just use more than I need, and then cut off the excess. And right now I'm cutting off the excess of the front, what I'm gonna attach to the first page, the front page. And I just leave the excess for the last page so it has a lot to glue to, so you'll see in a second. So right now what I'm doing is cutting the little flaps. So within each side of, inside of each little accordion shape, you need to cut out a little section to glues onto each page. So that's what I just did there on both halves of the thing. And then, okay, so now you can see I'm gluing the back of the tunnel book together. Now I'm gluing all the pages in. So that last page, I left all the excess. You'll see more in a second probably, but I'm just working my way through all the pages. I use like a just a scrap piece of paper to put under each little flap so I can glue without getting glue everywhere. So you see, just working my way to the front. I guess that's the front, that's the front. So I did it, we're all done. And oh, wait, and I needed to draw one more, um, and not draw, but cut out one more piece of blank page to put on the very back to cover up that excess. So it was kind of gives it a clean finish. And this is the final tunnel book. As you can see, kind of what's going on, the accordion edges using the comic book and the depth of it. So this is it, tunnel book. Hey, all right, here it is, the aftermath. Let's go over, I don't know, all, all I can think of right now is going over the supplies. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, first off, I used, I did not use the supplied um, board, aqua board thing to make something on it. I decided to do this tunnel book action because this is what I wanted to make when I last sketchbox actually, and I had this watercolor paper, um, Strathmore, let's see, 140 pound um, watercolor paper that I used. That's what I used for the paper. Um, I had that on hand. I, <clears throat> I did a little, I went to the sketchbox website and just watched their kind of how to use these tutorial and the things that struck me about that was they did not, in the tutorial, they used, they did not use this um, water paint thing, water brush thing as a brush to use, to actually use the paint with, the watercolor paint. So I did not either. What I used was a paintbrush like in the tutorial used a regular watercolor paintbrush in the tutorial. Watered down colors or directly from the tube. Just have fun and light wash here, the first color. And I'm going for a loose color splash look over the drawing. Which makes me go like, why would you in your tutorial use something that's not in the box? And I have a set of watercolor paintbrushes I bought off Amazon for super cheap. They're probably like seven bucks or less for the set. Um, they were like, yeah, like super cheap. And I've been using these two sizes. Let's see if they have any numbers on them. Six, it looks like, or nine, six or nine, and this two. So it must be a six and a two slash zero are the ones I use most common for a lot of the stuff I've been doing with watercolor, because I've been, up until this point, my watercolor 
um, has mainly consisted of these Prismacolor watercolor pencils that you draw on first and then you can go over with water. So <clears throat> I, uh, I had these on hand and kind of good thing I did so I could get started right away. I don't know why they couldn't include something like this brush, one brush, one or two brushes or three brushes in this kit. I bet you one brush could have been like, um, I don't know, less than a dollar or less 50 cents. Really cheap. I bet you you could get this really cheap to get in the box, but they did not do that. So that was the first thing I noticed that was weird. I did not really use this water pencil thing, pen, water brush thing at all. The way they use it in the tutorial on the video was used it as a way to put in, put water down before you inked on whatever surface. I think I might have done that a few times, but I just, I really haven't been able to figure out these. Like in the last sketchbox, which I happen to have right here, they had a couple of them in there as well that are the same, you know, same brand even, but same style. And I just... I'm like too impatient with it or something because whenever I squeeze it, water gets all over the place. It doesn't come out smoothly out just the brush part. I kind of like, the, I find this faster, just dip and go. Where this is kind of like, you have to like wait for it. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just still need more practice on how to do that. The paints themselves they gave us. So the paint, let's talk about the paints and then we'll talk about this pen. Um, the paints themselves. So the the four they give you, these four Cotman ones, um, they're all right. They're cool. They're good. They worked. However, this one that they give you that's by HWC, I don't know what the brand name is again, W, HWC, I guess. Halbin, let's see. Do I have the, what's in this sketch box? Halbin, Holbin, H-O-L-B-E-I-N, artist work. This, the, the comparison between this one and these ones is like extreme. This one is so much better, which makes me go, um, like, I want to use this more. This Halbin product way more now that I've side by side. They, these work. These are fine. They work, but they're not like, not anything like this. This, this is super smooth goes down amazing, was like really fun to kind of just, just has a totally different experience. And just these kind of, they, they kind of come out a little more grainy, not nearly as smooth as this. I mean, they weren't bad. They still look good, but you can just tell the difference when you're working with them, how much better this is than these are. I mean, like the price difference, this was, this one's 965 for one. And then these are five, four ninety nine for one, so that's and you get more. But man, it's if you're serious about watercolors, I could see this brand. Just don't even these Cotman ones. Don't even bother with. Just go for the better brands if you can afford it. That's what I'm gonna look at when it comes down the line. And then the other, the other, the, I think the only other thing to really talk about, um, since I didn't use the aqua board, I'm not crazy about these brush pens yet. This pen, this pen they gave this this this, uh, this Cretek Zig Heike, I can't pronounce it. Whatever, this pen that came in it, um, this is, pen was really nice. So I use these like I don't know Pigma Micron pens a lot, you know, for tracing things, for doing things. I use these Pigma Micron pens quite a bit, um, and and similar similar types of pens like that. This this one has like it's like a felt tip really small felt tip tip um and what's nice about it is it like marks instantly sometimes with these ones you have to kind of press in and and kind of like get that line going and it's not as it doesn't just bleed into the paper it kind of holds back a little bit where this one just like it just the, the, the it's really just sinks right into the paper or whatever you're drawing on really quickly and then it's it's kind of fun when you start to get practice with it and your technique starts to get down because the felt tip is kind of soft depending on how hard or soft you press you can create like the thickness of the line that gives it a very artistic look which I really I started I felt like I started to get a little bit of that kind of 
that kind of vibe as I was going on my project. Um, but yeah, so really nice pen. I really enjoyed that pen. The last thing about this pen to mention is that on the Sketchbox thing, the little thing in the box it comes with, it says lay it down after your watercolors because it's water-based and it'll run. And on the video, <laughs> it said you, it, you put it down first and you can paint over it. So I've gone ahead and done a sketch with some pencil. I'm coming in with the ink pen first. You can paint on top of this ink and it will not smudge or move. So they didn't quite um, have their information together what the way it actually works. So I just went based on the video and used it and drew down my lines first. And then on some of the things went back afterward and just darkened them up. So that's that's basically what I came up with. I can't give you a report on the board. So there's that. If you have any questions for me, uh, let me know. And I'll be happy to talk to you more in the comments. And of course, like I said at the beginning, if you want a sketch box of your own, if you dig on the sketch box, if you think it's a cool thing, um, use my code. It's in the description. And if three of you use it, then I get a free box and I can make more of these. Right now I have one more box left to do and then um, that's it. I'm not really paying for any more of them right now. So if you want to see me make more stuff, then um, let me know by using my code and um, I will get a box and I'll do the same process again. Go over the stuff. So yeah, hit me up in the comments. If you want to, this was gonna, this is listed on Etsy as we speak. So if you want to buy it from me, go to Etsy and you can have it. You just have to buy it off the Etsy store. That's in the comments below. I'll put a link that's so Spider-Man book right to the comments. And um, cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time, uh, be excellent to each other. Be patient, kind, and loving to each other. Subscribe, thumb it up, share it around. Peace.